What's good, fam? Man, just I just barely learned about some bullshit. That damn Falcon coin. I mean, I already knew the shit wasn't was bullshit, but I had hope. What's up with everybody? But uh, and that dude Jada Smith is doing all right. I like his little weird ass too. I don't know why he don't got his gold teeth in. But um, yeah. So that Falcon coin it looked like it took a dump today. What up, Queen? What it be like? No, I think it took a dump a few days ago because I got a message like two days ago, but I just barely looked today. It looked like it's gone. See you on that five coin still. Yeah. That was bad. They access game real quick. You in Irvine, I just drove through Irvine. What was it, yesterday? Oh, hey mom, I heard that message. I just, my, I just kind of slept all day today and was kind of lazy. But yeah, that tea worked. I was good after I drank that tea. Went to Mexico and was a little hungover. <sighs> but, um, man, I need to come up with a name. So I found this other nonprofit that got a similar idea. It's something called, like, Foundation for Youth Education or something like that. And I like it. I like it. I like the idea. The guy who came up with the foundation is like a teacher slash uh, writer. Seems like he's highly qualified. But I just figured, you know, the idea was dope. I'm just glad to see somebody else is doing it too because I decided to Google it for the first time today. And I just start seeing all these other, um, not all, but I, the first one I seen was a travel nonprofit. So at first I was like wanting to, wanting to rush it, like didn't feel like doing all the paperwork at first. I felt like it might be better to just um, do like a test run. You know, just to see how the taking goes. And then I got a message from a couple of people who said that it's much easier for people to invest into nonprofits that are already established. You know, and of course that makes sense. Like, why would you invest into a nonprofit that don't even have uh, the LLC set up or nothing like that? So I figured to set all that up, I might spend about, I could probably do my article by itself, by myself, the article to the, to the state. But, um, man, I just got to sit down and do it. It's just work. You know what I mean? Or you could just pay like legal zoom, legal zoom would do it for, I think they charge like 800 or a thousand or something like that. But. I think that's what this is going to all boil down to. I was talking with my mom. And she be telling me, don't be wasting my time. My pops, man. My pops will talk you out of anything besides a lottery ticket. Like, 
I remember when I first started sharing my ideas on making businesses with him. And man, he'll talk you out of everything. I used to see him talk, try to talk my mom out of gang of shit. Like I remember when my mom wanted to redo the bathroom. And my dad's like, nah, the bathroom's straight. Leave it alone. Mom went in there with a hammer. Ha, ha. Start tearing that bathroom up. Turned into a big argument and the whole nine. But sure enough, I came, I went to go like see grandma for a few days. I came back. Bathroom's all new. New kit, new bathroom counter. Nah. I actually didn't go to no strip clubs when I was in Vegas this time. Man, the strip clubs out there turn into something else like you gotta pay a hundred dollars to get in the strip club in Vegas now. Like the Spearman Rhino, the Crazy Horse. Those big establishments, you spending a hundred dollars to go in there these days. On a Friday night, Saturday night. I mean, on a Tuesday, you might get in for 20 or 40 or 50 or something like that. I don't know. I wouldn't doubt it if it's 100 every fucking night. But, nah, I didn't go. I went somewhere better yesterday, though. <laughs> I went to the Adelitas. Google it. Adelitas. That's where I was at. Boy, turn it. Turn it up. But anyway, um, what was I on? Okay, so the nonprofit. So everybody knows, well, the basics. So to start a business, you gotta do the basics. Wait, let me let me read that last message. No doubt, I'm not big on strip clubs unless it's a group. Yep. What up, Floyd? Man, we I'm discussing names. I need to come up with a name for a nonprofit. So, yeah, of course. So that's what I was saying. The most important thing to do first is come up with the name. I mean, I remember when I first started my little construction deal, I had to come up with the name. And I wanted it to be like corporate. I didn't want it to be like a, a name like after like my name. Kenny's. Nah, I didn't want to do that. I, I wanted to do something like, so it sound corporate, you know? So that's how I, I actually came up with the heating alternatives, you know, so it could sound just like, woo! Like, no one ever heard no shit like that. Made you think about what the fuck does he do? So. But of, of course, I wanted it a little more this a little more clear cut straight to the point. So I tried to think of what's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is education, of course, because every day we are seeking education to be successful. So I think that's another key word success. I don't really like to use the word success because we always have a big misconception on what success is. Success is only measured from us. Like for example, you can't compare my accomplishments, my successes to anyone else's because we all wasn't dealt the same hand to begin with, you know? So, I like to say that success is only measured by oneself. And I really believe that. Like, you see people with learning disabilities, with handicaps, with all different types of setbacks. Poor, black, <laughs> all sorts of big setbacks. So, so, you can't say that. Yeah, everybody got the same opportunity to be successful. 
because it's not true. But that doesn't mean that it's not possible. It's just how much effort do you want to put in it? And that's another thing. In America, to be successful, it takes a lot of effort. Okay. Some people say it's not. Some people say it's natural. Some people say, I just went to school. School was free. This, this, and that. But when it comes down to it, it's still effort. So, I'm thinking more along the lines of effort, education, success, but not success. I remember, like I shared with, with, uh, with, uh, I forgot who I was talking to. I've been forgetting a lot of conversations lately. That's bad. Smoking too much, I guess. But, um, where I was like. I like started from the bottom and I'm here and they're like what I don't get it and I'm like yeah because like you don't have to be rich you don't have to to get a good job all you have to do is like climb to the top of a mountain or have a nice view up from a building or something and you feel so happy you you're like started from the bottom now I'm here it's just like a little like celebration of a small accomplishment you know Black people always celebrate the smallest stuff. Who's that? Crypto Al. What up, Alex? Man, trying to come up with a name today, bruh. I need to start putting one foot in front of the other to come up with this nonprofit. And the main thing is to come up with a name. I already tried to explain, like, the goal is to be liberated, educated, and have fun. You know, I think most importantly, have fun. And then through that fun, you realize that, oh, man, this is real freedom. And then, you know, through that, seeking that freedom, become somewhat educated to the world and other purposes of life. You know, sometimes like I was watching CNN today, Anthony Bourdain and this immigrant girl from um, somewhere in Central America. She ended up in Florida and she was saying when she moved to Florida, she didn't want to move inland because her dream was to live by the beach. And now she lives by the beach, but she only been to the beach one time in the the last year and a half. And um, she's like, yeah, this is my dream, but I can't live it because I'm busy working. And I'm like, man, how was that? You know, fun. It's not fun. But that's the way we that we program to be. So and then I remember when I was young, I couldn't pay attention to nothing. I'm bouncing off the walls. School was slow. School was born. I couldn't pay attention. I was not because I was broke too. Couldn't pay attention. Shit was too expensive. Paying attention. No, but um. So. Uh, names. So this other one, like I was telling you about, this traveling nonprofit. For some reason, it's not coming up right now. I googled it twice. Oh yeah, here we go. It's called Flight F L Y T E, and it's the Spirit of Adventure. Spirit of Adventure. That sounds fun. So we, it is, it, okay. So it does, I think it will truly work on the spirit and the soul. Like I used to have this saying, like you gotta forever, every day, the secret to life is you gotta work on your mind, your body and your soul. Mind, body and soul. Mind through edu- constantly educating yourself. Body through being aware of what you're putting into it, exercising soul through spiritual um development you know we're forever developing this this um spirit being you know we always trying to figure out like what what's what religion is correct and when it comes down to it man all the religions are correct so you have to dig into it which takes a lifetime of of research to really embrace the world's gratitude of power which comes from you know ancient cultures and 
practices and what have you but um that's another reason why you got to get out just so you can see and experience like for example you will never know anything about buddhism from the united states but if you start traveling in like mostly um countries countries that really practice buddhism you're like whoa these people buy flowers every day and donate to statues and they got statues everywhere and you know people say don't get caught up in religions and other religions but you can't help just the the humbleness that comes from those practices you know so just to experience it it's like it teaches you to respect even jesus christ in a different way you know what i mean then we have all, you know we can get on that christianity talk i got so many ways of thinking of that but just to stay on topic the um name is important so this nonprofit right here he got the same concept it says uh, the foundation for leadership and youth travel education so that's what flight stands for the foundation for leadership and youth travel education it's a nonprofit education that empowers youth living in un in underserved communities through transformation travels experience today's education is per educational system provides very little in the way of global education and many struggling schools and teachers have little or no opportunity to offer their students access to resources that can provide any type of ex experimental international education. So this is this person's website. <clears throat> I haven't dug in it too much. I just tried to look at the pictures and it looks like this place is more like um, more focused on education internationally. I don't know what type of setting they're providing, what age group, or none of that at this point. But um, I was just happy to see that someone else can recognize or someone else feels the vision and actually put work into um, making this happen. You know, and of course, man, you look at this picture the coincidence this dude is from new york um he said he made a website called nomadic matt his name is nomadic matt a website matt matt to me sounds like a caucasian name so and the people who are able just to get out and travel is mostly caucasian people so it would be safe for me not safe but it would be quick for me to assume that matt is more likely white but I have a feeling that this really empowers minority people. And check out this picture. This picture is full of minority kids. Man, this dude, this dude got the vision. It don't matter what nationality he is. The point is, is he got, he got the vision. I like it. I like it. I feel like this is, this is the, well, now there's something else different. I, I didn't want to, well, from my first vision, I didn't want to do teenagers. Because of the liability factors of dealing with teenagers under 18. Um, see, that, that just takes more research. It's jumping into another realm, you know. See, I wanted to deal with, like, young adults. To where I won't have to get, like, parent waivers and all that type of legal mumbo jumbo but I do feel the younger the better yeah you get them out there at it before they're tainted or before they're 
devoured by the chains of economics. Because, you know, most, most young people, as soon as they hit 18, boom, they're getting credit cards, they're getting every type of loan, they're buying a car, they're getting a job, and they try to get an apartment, and just, boom, once you do all that, you stuck. You stuck in there. Crypto gang, 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 gang. But it's crack. All right, we talking about coming up with this name for a nonprofit. We talked about Falcon Coin being going through excess scheme. That's basically all I touched on. I talked about that for a minute and I just jumped right into this into this um, nonprofit name. So the goal of the nonprofit is travel. And do and while you do this travel, the first thing you're gonna do is have fun. The second thing we're gonna do is uh <clears throat> Become educated on the world and just on different cultures and the different reactions you get from the outside versus we on the inside looking out, want the experience of the outside looking in. Um, the goal is to send young people traveling for, I'll say, no less than two months in one stretch. So two to three months, budget backpacking, fully paid for, all expenses paid for. But see, people think all expenses paid for, two-month vacation, that shit's going to cost thousands of dollars. You're right. It is, but it's not going to cost thousands of dollars. I feel like I've done it. I'll say the daily budget needed to to. Budget backpack is about somewhere between five and fifteen dollars a day, depending on the city you went. So if we go average ten dollars a day. That's just a that's just an average. And you go for sixty days, seventy days. You see, it ain't that much. It ain't that much at all. The round trip flight actually around the world to most underdeveloped places. You know, we ain't got to go to all of the, 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 the mainstream number one tourist destination. What's crack, Chris? But um, you do want to do the tours. You do want to go to all the temples, all the, you know, you want to rent a bike. You want to stay in a, in a hostel. You want to eat good food three, four times a day. You want to go to the night market, buy little souvenirs, do little little tour things they have. No, and I think all of that will be in budget. The only thing that won't be in budget is drinking alcohol. But if you like save your money, you could drink alcohol. Alcohol is cheap anyway. When you travel, alcohol is like 50 cents a beer. And who say you can't bring your own money? If you could bring your own money, that's more money you could spend. But at the end of the day, it's an experiment. It's a nonprofit experiment. Now, this is the catch, right? They're like, wow, you're going to do all this for free? I'm like, yeah, but they have to provide content. The content that they provide will be inspiring to others. Now, you have to make like requirements where you got to upload two, three videos a day where you eat, where you sleep, where you use the restroom. What did you guys do today? Did you have to walk? Did you take a bus? Would you pack? How you take a shower? What type of shoes you wearing? All of these important factors. It's like people want to know. Would you do that night? 
Because I remember sometimes I'll just be walking through the street looking for like a nightclub or a bar or something. I'll be walking like, and all of a sudden I see all these people outside. And they out there drinking, sitting down. They're like, hey, come here. And I'm like, hey, what's up? How you doing? They're like, sit down. Here, have a drink. And you don't say no. You just drink up and sit down. And all of a sudden you're having a party with these folks. And those type of... Um, experiences I think is what's was part of the essence of traveling because here I don't care where you go no one's going to be like hey where are you going come here come drink with us like maybe I'm going to say one out of a year, one time, no, one time out of two years, something realistic like that. Somebody might call you over and offer you a drink. Well, being a male, I'm sure if you're a female, you, you might, your chances are a lot higher. But as a male, nah, sorry, you ain't going to get no love like that. But, um, so I got to come up with this name. Does it happen at all? And I kid you not. Every night I walk through the streets while backpacking, people always hovering like, hey, they don't even know English all the time. But they just want to sit there and, and try to talk and laugh and giggle and just and it's just like one of those situations you have to experience to to really appreciate. I remember I was walking through uh, on this beach in Patia. It's like two hours south of Bangkok. And it was like six girls on the beach. And well, they looked like girls. You know how it is. A couple of them wasn't, but they dressed like girls. And I'm walking by and they're like, hey, come over here with me. Come chill. And I'm like, all right. They're like, here, have a beer. Had a beer. Boom, boom. She's like, it's my birthday. I'm like, what? It's your birthday and you giving me your beer? I ain't used to that one. You've been to Pattaya? Man, that joint is cracking. I love it. I actually went to the best club I've ever been to in my life in Pattaya. I've been to... I've, I'll tell you how it went down. I, I went in this club. And that's all that happened at the beach, though. I'm going to move on. The beach. Uh, we went to the liquor store. I bought a bunch more beer. You know, beer is cheap out there. But I ended up spending like 5 or $6 on two bags of, of all these beers. Brought them out to the beach. And, man, these people show real love, like, instantly. Like, 0 to 100 real quick. Gave them all hugs, hugs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Got a little Facebook friend ads. I'm like, all right, nice to meet you. That was really nice. But this club in Patia, oh man, the first time I went to this club, this chick took me there, right? She's like, oh, you gonna love it. It's all hip hop, boom, 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 boom. She's like, you gonna love it. I'm like, let's go. She's like, nah, it's, done. it's, done. it's not open yet. I'm like, what? It's not open yet. It's like freaking 11, 12 o'clock at night. What you mean it's not open yet? She's like, oh, it's after hour. I'm like, okay, whatever you say. So she ended up getting me over there to this club at about two in the morning. As soon as I walked in, boom, it was lights, camera, action. Man, I felt like I was in the States. I felt like I was in the States, but when you walk, let me tell you. When you walking around in the club, just like, yeah, you know, going to the bar, you go get your little drink, okay, your little drink, and you looking, and you see this girl over there, and she looking at you, and she's looking like, like, hey, and you like, oh, all right, what's up, okay, and then they look, man, you gotta look away, because it's just so much pop, and you look over here, and it's another one, like, hey, what's up, and you like, wait, what's going on? So then all of a sudden you get a dance, right? I think I danced with the girl that I was with, okay. And then she's like, I'm going to go sit down and smoke a hookah. I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. 
So I'm walking, as I'm walking, one grabs me on the shoulder like, hey, dance with me. I'm like, okay, yeah, for sure. I'll dance with you, she ain't gonna mind. So I dance with her, boom, boom, boom. And then I break away, go sit down right quick. And, she, and no girl that I was with, she's like, go ahead, go dance. It's cool, it's cool. She's like, you, you on holiday. Yeah, I'm, yeah, you're right, I'm on holiday. She's like, yeah, go dance, I'm chilling. I said, okay, go back on the dance floor, dance with another girl. She's spinning and taking it to, you know, just having a great time. I'm like, okay, all right, I'm sweating now. Let me go get another drink. I'm good. So I start walking to get another drink. This girl's like, wait, no, my turn. I was waiting for you. I want to dance with you next. And I'm like, huh? And I'm like, just, huh? She thinking she gonna get some, all of them, maybe. Well, it's questionable, all right? So I admit, Patia, you know it's like more working girls in that city than anywhere, but this was a different type of club. Remember I said it was an after hour. So this is the club where all the girls go when they get off work. So if they managers, if they secretaries, if they bartenders if they hostess if they waitresses if they dancers like no matter what they do when they get off work and they want to go party when they want to go look for some real love baby, they go over here to the other club you know so but i'm sure you know if you offer them some bread they'll take it but not not to i not to i i always get lucky i guess in that spot because I know they know that this is a love thing and this ain't no no pro quo, quo, you know what I'm saying? What was the name of the club? It was called um, Flex, Club Flex. I did find a Facebook page on that bitch. It's called Club Flex. It's on Walking Street. Hey, so what... Was oh, cause you was in the military. That's probably why you went to uh, Patia, huh? Cause she was in the Marines. I think Patia used to be a Marine base back in the day, actually, during the Vietnam War. But then it turned into a party scene. I guess when the during the Vietnam War, or people used to bounce. Oh, you went as a civilian. That's gangster. That's gangster. See, I'll, that's, that's one thing dope about, you know, the crypto space is that a lot of people that's in the crypto have got out this mug, got around like pop. What's good, Dre? Shoot, just finished talking about Club Flex. Shoot, that night <laughs> I met this chick and she had some curly hair, like you could tell she was mixed. And uh, I was like, I'm going to Bangkok in the morning. And she's like, oh, yeah, I love Bangkok. I'm like, All right. I'm like, I've never been. You want to show me around? She's like, yeah. I'm like, well, I'm leaving the hotel at 10 in the morning. And at this time, it was like maybe like 430 in the morning. I'm like, so if you want to go, you better be there by 10 in the morning. And she knew somebody who that knew somebody. So, man, once we got to Bangkok, phew, we was in the clubs with the DJs. And I didn't even know she knew somebody like that, you know. So, I paid for everything, but I didn't give her a dime. Well, I did. I sent her back with 500 baht. I mean, that's like 30 bucks. So, I guess we hung out like, uh, like three days. Couldn't send her home with nothing. I gave her 3500 baht. She gave me a look like, huh? 500 baht. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're my girlfriend. I'm going to come back and see you when I get back. So baby, and then I went traveling, backpacking, and then I went back to Patia. Yeah, Patia, I, I had to go back to that club. Because, you know, usually... A good night going to the club is to two-step. 
with one girl, right? If, if I go to the club and I buy a girl a drink, I will be very happy if I could at least two-step with you before you bounce with your girlfriends, right? So if I get to two-step for one song, even just a half a song, you know, I don't need three songs. I don't need you to take it to the floor. I just need two songs. I mean, uh, two two step for one half a song, and that's a good night. That's what I'm used to, you know. But going to that club, and it was like, oh, do you want to dance? Oh, do you want to dance? Oh, do you want to dance? And I'm like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I told nobody no. I told nobody no. And I was just like, man. I, did I tell you that story? It was, that's how it really went down too. It was like the first time I ever went to a club and no, I told nobody no. No one told me no. It was no did not exist. It was only yes, yes, and more yeses. So, man, I've been actually to, I like to say I've been to uh, Thailand three times, but I've been to that club, Club Flex, about 20 times. About 20 times, seriously. You're like, how'd you go there 20 times and you went there? Because I'm going every night. <laughs> nah, I'll be going every night. But I'll leave and then come back. I'll leave and come back. Yeah, for real. Way more fun. Way more fun. Out here is stressful. You go to the club out here, it's stressful. Like, man, if you got anxiety problems, rejection disorder, or any type of medication taken, oh, man, you in trouble. I see DJ Ghost. You know DJ Ghost? DJ Ghost is like, you know real smokers, no matter what, where they at, they can be in a house, they can be in a tunnel. No, no win at all. And it's still gone. I'm back on that basement smoke too, mom. Look. It look a little fuzzy in the camera. It ain't that fuzzy, but it ain't that bomb either. Well, you know what it is? It's organic. It's organic. It's totally organic. You know, that's that's how I, I smoke time to time. I go back and forth. I go to the shop and then go to that. But um, let me get back on topic, though. So I think through all of the experiences that you that you go through overseas. It's such a growth process. I remember when like I'll see it like a young girl, for example, like from from Europe. Because the Europeans, they travel like soon as they get out of high school, 17, 18, like they spring break will be like to travel for three weeks, four weeks for spring break and shit. So like when I seen a young person traveling, like I was at like, oh, it was like, man, you are going to be a leader. It was like real clear to me that this person is not only very intelligent, but like over intelligent compared to what, you know, we pump out of there. Like I felt like the least smart and these kids were like eight, 10 years younger than me. I think I was about 30 years old when I, my first trip and I remember traveling with these two girls. They was like. 18 and 19 from Sweden and um, I respected them so much it was like I seen some dudes looking at them up and down from Quebec 
Like these dudes was looking at them like they wanted to eat them up. And I'm like, nah, 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 you, that's a little too disrespectful. I mean, your eyes is just a little too googly right now. Like put them mugs back in your head because this is our friends here. We ain't going to let that rock. And he's like, hey, bro, you know, no disrespecting, but man, they're pretty hot. Who did they choose? I'm like, man, they ain't choosing nobody. They just, we just rolling, all right? Now you're welcome to roll with us, but it ain't gonna be none of that. Yeah, I, I found myself like seeing these these women that was like, not only were they respectable, but they were like, you knew they was gonna be tomorrow's leaders just because of the courage and the the chances they were making, the number of languages they were willing to learn. Like we would go to another country, like cause we we backpacked for like a month together. And then like we went from Thailand, we, we went to Laos. And Laos, it's right next door, but the dialect just totally changes. So we had to learn how to say, you know, how to communicate with the locals all over again. And these chicks was just excelling. Like they grabbed the language and was just like, and they was reciting it, ba 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 ba, And I'm, so left in the dust i'm just like whoo my gosh and they already knew their language english and other languages like next door like the norwegian language and the finland language and the swedish languages are kind of similar so they can throw words back and forth yeah so i was just like so impressed so if we can I, I feel like if I can get if I would have traveled at a younger age then I would have been more equipped to to be a leader straight up like I, I feel like part of being a leader is, is being a nomad part of being a nomad is dwelling the earth for months at a time and then your mind changes Your mind just flips around. You start to get whole perspectives on different things. And then you learn what's really important. What is important? Uh, if you feel like money is important, then you will come home and, and make it. If you feel like quality of life is important, then you'll come home and build your quality of life. Hey, that's a good, that's a good point right there, Chris. Thanks for bringing that up. It takes courage. Now, there's a lot of different courages, but let's let's tackle one courage. The first courage is most people was asking me before I left, like, what type of weapons am I going to take? Like, when I get there, am I going to buy weapons? Like, all these extreme questions about protection to where most people feel like once you leave like oh be careful out there because you know not too many people like americans and you should i mean that's why america has so much military force because they've done so much to where the most people with the same type of reasoning that america has will come back and you know take revenge i remember as a little kid i used to think that if someone killed my parents me killing them is not good enough like i'll have to make them suffer and suffer and suffer and then kill them like there's like there's automatic suffer that we want to put back on the people so we feel like they're gonna do it back to us and surprisingly surprisingly it's not like that at least i feel from my experience i didn't feel that like for example i went through vietnam I went from the rooter to the tutor. I was I was traveling with like about eight friends that I made. And I had to I decided to break away from these friends. And we had a great relationship. It was those two girls I was part of the pack, my homie Vic. He's from uh, Paris, but he's Indian. I was telling him that he was black. I mean, he was way darker than me. He knew he was black, but I was trying to show him, hey, 
this is how it feels to be black, you know, <laughs> you're going to be treated differently. But uh, totally aware, but he wanted to be naive and oblivious to it. And but very smart, very he's still my friend to this day. Matter of fact, I'm gonna see him in here soon. I'm gonna make sure I blog. His name is Vikram. Um, he he moved from Paris to Britain and now got a job at British Airlines flying around the world. He's gonna fly to LA this summer and he's gonna come stay at my house. So he's gonna see me, and I'm gonna make sure y'all see him because this dude inspires me. And right now he's probably about 25, 26. And um, yeah, young kids inspiring, fucking can inspire anything. But um, man, other people was like courage in terms of giving up your lifestyle. That's another big one, Chris. Uh, uh, courage. To give up your lifestyle. I think that's even more bigger than courage of being out of your comfort zone or, or being or feeling vulnerable through like attack or your safety. Like once you get across, once you get there, you learn right away you have nothing to fear. Like a few nights ago, I was walking through the streets of Mexico. I was in TJ, it was dark, it was like Slumville. And um, I wasn't afraid. I mean, I see people walking towards me in the dark. They got a jacket on because it's cold. And, you know, I could freaking walk on the other side of the street. But no, nah, I'm just, I think my streets out here in L.A. could be way worse than most of the streets that I've walked on in other countries. Um, I think of the body counts. It's probably higher over here. You know, those little um, sidewalk memorials, sidewalk memorials, like when somebody gets shot or hit by a car or something, they set up all the flowers on the sidewalk and the candles and stuff. We call those a sidewalk. Man, we got more sidewalk memorials around than than, than anywhere. Yeah, lots of my area too. So you feel me? They just, so like, I think it's a better chance if anything happened to you, it'd be from a freak accident, like a car accident. Uh, 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 yeah, see, y'all know what's up. Sidewalk memorials, homie knows this. And that's, I just, I bet you, if you can, if there was a website that documented all the, the streets where somebody died, I mean, I just think the streets will be littered, just painted in blood. Yeah, that's so... But in Vietnam, I was afraid. The same courage that you talked about, Al, is the same courage that I feel I needed when I went to Vietnam. So, and it was crazy too because I took a 24-hour bus from the from the capital of, of Laos, which was called Vien Tien, and I Vien Tien, something like that. And it, the bus went north all through the mountains, through the village, through the rice fields for 24 hours, all the way to uh, the capital of Vietnam, which is called Hanoi. So, and I took a local bus, you know, not a bus that like a like a Greyhound. I took a bus like that people was getting on and off the whole way. So that's why it took so long. And I just slept in the back, you know, I just slept, woke up, slept, woke up. It was people singing and dancing and partying on the bus. And I tried to like entertain them a little bit, but I'm the type that when I get in the bus or a car, I just want to sleep. You know, I just want to sleep the whole way. You know, I look out the window a little bit, but I fall asleep looking out the window. Mm, gone. Love it. Yeah, that's that's a talent. Flights to hell. I sleep the whole flight. I want a window seat and I'm <laughs> that stupid pillow. Black. I put the blanket over my head. I'm out. I had to tell the flight attendant, hey lady, wake me up when the food come. Don't let me sleep through this food because I need to eat, okay? Tell everybody, don't let me sleep through no meal. Wake me up. And sure enough, they come and wake me up. Mr. Roberson, 
You want chicken or beef? Like, yeah. What up, Scott? Catnap? I don't know. I'll be snoring, huh? I put I, I watch four movies. I put on four movies and don't watch none of them. Like on a 12-hour flight. I knock a 12-hour flight out. Oh, I ain't scared of no flight. That's 12 hours. I mean, I'll do that with no problem. Going into the time zone or jet lag out the time zone. It don't matter. But um, Hanoi, I get to Hanoi and they drop me off like in the middle of this. Like it wasn't even in the city. It was like in this little town. And I had a, I had got my room on the way there. Just I don't know why, but I did. So I'm trying to tell people they got all these little motorbike taxis. And I'm trying to tell them, hey, um. District District 1 or District 3, I think I had, something like that. I'm like, District 3, District 3, take me to District 3. And they're like, and the Vietnamese, if they don't understand you, they're kind of they're kind of a little more arrogant. So it's like, if they don't understand you, they're not going to try all the time. So like in other, like in Laos and, and Cambodia and Myanmar, if they don't understand you, they'll just look at you and smile. But in Vietnam, they don't understand you. They make a funny face. They be like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Bye. <laughs> they be gone. I mean, they, they, you think they're going to get some more help because that's what they do. They'll go get some more help. They'll bring somebody else back and be like, this dude needs some help. Help this dude out. But over there, hell no. So I was like, okay. And at this time, this was probably like five, six years ago, five yeah, something like that. And I didn't have Wi-Fi. So I went over, I didn't have um, a SIM card or no internet service. So I just went over there with my phone and then I had to find a Wi-Fi connection. But around the world, everybody shares their Wi-Fi. As soon as you go in their business, they got the Wi-Fi password up on the chalkboard. So it's like, man, you, you easily just can go online. So I'm walking around and boom. I finally find some Wi-Fi. I'm like, okay, boom, this place. Oh, they got food. I'm going in there. I go in there and I pretend like I know what I'm doing. I'm like, hi. Yeah, hey. She comes over, brings a menu. I don't, I'm just like point at the first picture I see. This one, noodle soup. Yes, that. Boom, sit down and I'm on the Wi-Fi. I'm trying to find where I got to go. District 9, okay, I see. It's, it's kind of far. It's like. 3k's away so man i gotta get another taxi or something little taxi bike and i look over look over the side and i see four dudes sitting at this table drinking and they all like looking over each other's shoulder and they like hey and i'm like what's up what's up all right and they're like come over come over and i'm like all right you know no big deal so they're like here pour a drink no they had the girl like over there, the service is crazy. So the waitress, she just stands there, just pouring their drinks. Like their 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 cup is never like down. So as soon as they take the way they drink it is like they kill their beer with one drink. And they put ice and then they put fill it all back up. And she just stand there and keep filling it up. And they keep bringing out all this food. And they're like, here, try this. And they're like, actually like putting it like in my mouth you know and i'm not gonna be like rude or nothing i'm just gonna go with the flow and everything they was giving me was was good i mean and they was looking at my face like you like you like i'm like yeah yeah i like they're like oh yeah one more shot and then we get a drink five bye bofo yeah and they was just partied up it was, it was dope. It was dope. So I went in there like with extra anxiety, all scared what the food was hitting on. Man, to tell you the truth, it was weird stuff. I, and then they were trying to tell me what it was, but they'll tell me in their language. So it went, yep, yep. but, you know, besides the basic like noodle soup and pho and stuff like that, all their little magical cuisines in here. Like, yeah, this is special. We eat this all the time. This is rare. We eat this once in a while. One of the dudes knew English because he worked on a boat. He worked on an oil rig. He's like, yeah, my boss, they're American. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. 
or I was talking about, um, you know, how, well, first Alex brought up that it takes courage to travel. And I'm like, hell yeah, especially like when you go to a place that we was in war with, you know, so like I went to Vietnam and I had a lot of anxiety. I was scared, but my heart was telling me, go see, go see. And then the crazy thing is I was traveling with like, like, I'm going to say like six good friends, but we built our group up to like 12. It dropped down to like, like eight, but we, but we had six strong and I bounced on everybody. I'm like, I got to go, y'all. They're like, why? Why? We're going 4,000 Island. We're going south and we're going into Cambodia. I'm like, you know what? I got to go to Vietnam. And y'all are going too far south. It's going to make my trip back to Vietnam longer. And stop. I'm on the fence about Istanbul, Turkey right now. Man, they got a bunch of politics popping off in Turkey right now. I mean, I'm not discouraging you and telling you to be scared because a lot of that shit just be things to deter you from spinning. Damn, I got booted off right now. I think my phone froze up because it said uh, restart the app. What up, make money? So we trying to come up with a name today. I brought up Fal that whack ass Falcon coins that I made a video a few months ago talking about how don't waste your money in this bullshit. And then a dude wrote a long ass article about how Falcon was there for the long term. It's still up. It's still up on my page. But um, I need a name for a nonprofit. Yeah, fuck those Linden platforms. I mean, we already knew, you know, we already knew. I did it for fun, but after that divorce, that shit wasn't fun anymore. That shit was not fun. I like, I think, which one did I just do? Because Queen was telling me Fi coin, F-I coin. But for some reason, I thought she was talking about fine coin. So I just barely sent like, I think two, three hundred dollars over to fine coin. And I did a staking thing over there, which I freaking regret because I don't want to give no lending platform, nothing. I don't give a fuck how they hide the terms. But anyway, it's in there. Um, I haven't even been back to look at it, but she was talking about FI coin. So then I look at the FI coin and she's like, man, you need a. You got to make sure you go in with the VPN. So. I'm setting that up. Pronto. But. um, what Airline did you use? Uh, I use it. I always use the cheapest ticket. I could find. So what I do is I usually travel around the slow times because I never really had money to travel. I mean, Alex, you still in here? Like Alex brought up courage, and that's that's a real freaking heavy, heavy uh, point right there. Is that uh, if if you ain't got the money to come back so basically you got to pay your bills the month you leave you got to pay your bills the month you gone if you gone two months you got to pay your bills the two months you gone and then you got to have your bills paid when you come back because it's going to take you a minute to get your wheels turning to make the money that you need to to get back to the the lifestyle that you was living so 
in that respect, man, that take a lot of courage right there. For my, what I did was I gave up everything. That shit took courage too. I had to give up my job. I had to give up any, all of my hobbies, my dogs, like, Good thing that I was able to find somebody to like take care of them. Um, I had, good thing that like I had a property to come back to, so I like rented out my room. Discipline, it's like mental discipline, you know. It's like some shit you gotta like talk yourself through. You know, but the reward though, bro. Think about this. Okay, if you could accomplish those sacrifices. And don't don't think they're big. They're small. I think. Oh, you said which airline did I take? I took uh, China Air, and I took Air China. Those are two separate airlines. Um, I took another airline too, but I can't remember the name of it right now. I did try to remember it. It's like some off brand. I take like the cheapest, and it's I'm good with that. Like I don't need to take no freaking extravagant airline like maybe one day but not right now i'm good i'm good sometimes i get on the plane i got a strategy i'm the last one to get on the plane i use okay i've never been on spirit i'm the last one not the very last one but i'll be like within the last few people to get on the plane and as i'm walking to my seat i'm like hmm, hmm, hmm. business class oh it's an open row in business class. I'll take it. And I get in the business class. And they got to kick off my shoes. I put on the little the little house shoes they got. I open up a water. Start drinking it. I, I put on the earphones. I put on everything. Damn, you 6'3". <laughs> yeah, you got. You need some leg room. I, I squeeze up anywhere. Nigga, I throw on air. I start a movie up. Nigga, I put on everything so that way I'm like, pull out the pillow, out the blanket. Nigga, you put some everything. I'm just like, you put on the eye things. Nigga, leave me alone. And sure enough, like every time I do that, they don't, they don't fuck with me. They just take the rest of the waters that's right there because you know, three seats. And as soon as we take off, they be like, boom, you're now free to. Walk around the cabin. Yeah, I just lay down. I take over all three seats right there. They well, nah, they don't trip. They don't trip. They don't never check my ticket. Nope. They don't check the ticket. They don't ask you what you're doing or nothing. It's just like a free upgrade. If nobody tripping, they ain't tripping. Yeah, I get the whole row all the time. The whole entire row. And also, I fly in the slow season, so I fly like October. You know, I try to leave in the beginning of October and then come back like before Thanksgiving. That has been my my uh, my strategies on my trips lately. And then I kid you not, I don't pay more than five hundred round trip. I think one time I paid five fifty <coughs> round trip. 550 round trip. I mean, that's that's nothing for the experience. I mean, it costs 500 round trip to fly coast to coast. And, well, just the no, just the the flight, just the flight work, you know. So yeah, everything 550 after tax and everything in October. You could probably go on Expedia. I think. I do I do that uh, kayak. At least that's where I I do my searches at. I ain't been over here in a while, but um, you hit a kayak and you know, I throw in. I like to just do the the BKK. You know, let me see what what they talking about right now. BKK for October. No, not October. I like October. It's not too hot. The tourist is it's a low tourist season. Everything is everything's already cheap, but everything's even more cheap. No, ain't nothing wrong with more cheap. But 
You see, and that's that's what we was talking about. We was talking about see that's that's of um a ten dollar budget. I mean ten dollar budget doesn't include nightlife. Yeah, I, I need some random names. Crypto is always the G. Make money. Make money are always coming up with the most creative tech strategies. But uh So, yeah, those names with the goal in mind of some education, some um fun a lot of fun actually some education some culture a lot of tours like every day you got to do stuff every day you got to go walking through the city going on a hike going to a temple going to a museum you know do the high ropes going to cooking school see right now i found this one right here for 550 So that's a 550 round trip right there. That's a little high. The price of fuel must be going up. Yeah, that's it. That's 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 the one I took before Air Ari. Yeah, I took that bum. I mean, it's cool. I wasn't tripping. I, I kind of like the China flights a little better though. You know, can't follow where he's out. Some bumps in more than 20 minutes. I know. You know why? Because I don't feel like rolling up another one, Scott. <laughs> Our first international airline because it's a, a male baby's name of courage. Oh. Male baby's name of courage. Damn. Good thing I didn't have no mustache. Yeah, I should try to burn my mustache off. But, uh, yeah, so I was thinking, uh, so I found that website. I, you wasn't here, uh, Make Money With Crypto, but I found a nonprofit that's already established with the same idea. Yeah, that's that is a crack lighter dude, for rocking the mic. <laughs> so hey, make money with crypto. This foundation is called Flight F L Y T E. The Foundation for Leadership and Youth Travel Education. I the funny thing was look at the academic, I mean the uh, geographics of these kids. All these youngsters right here are all kids of color you know so it's like the vision the vision is exactly what I was thinking and um, today something told me hey look it up look it up see if someone else is doing it nomads like nomads courage nomads courage something to think about what's the website oh it's called flight fl Oh, it's called Take Flight. Take F L Y T E dot org. Take flight dot org. Then it, it it's kind of like what I was thinking about. It's like that empowers youth living in underserved communities through transformative travel experience. That like hit the nail on the head. The only difference is, like I said, like the, these kids are a little young. I kind of want to deal with someone a little older. Hey, you out, Chris? Hey, good looking out, man. Good talking with you. You have a good night, G. I'm about to go to sleep, too. It's about to be 12 o'clock. But um, I needed to stir up this pot and try to come up with a name that I can stick with forever. I'm about to taste one with your blog style. What up, honey? About to taste one with me? 
Oh, twist? Is that? I don't know. So, with the goals of traveling, having fun, some education, building courage, I think it's more like a... You know, the, the more I say, think about this courage thing. It's like Americans are so big and bad and ruthless, but really scared. We got to have guns. Take, no, they spell flight, F-L-Y-T-E dot org. Take F-L-Y-T-E. The dude, the dude who built the uh, foundation, his name is Nomad Matt, Nomadic Matt. He's like a travel blog. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's ghetto. I think that's going to be the, the people who will take advantage of the opportunity. I think a lot of times, I think to be quite honest with you, I think these type of people are the ones who are gonna benefit the most. Oh, oh, the reason why they spelt it like that is because it's an acronym for the Foundation for Leaders and Youth Travel Education. So FLIGHT is actually an acronym for that, which I think was a, was a fair, was a fair acronym. I mean, especially with the name Take Flight, because flight is like travel and it can be flight for flight of the mind, you know, uplifting. At least that's how I feel it. You know, and it's all perspective. Support a student's ability to study abroad. I'm more focused on the entertainment aspect. So I know when I was freaking. 16, I wasn't ready to, to become educated. I didn't understand the power of education. And even if I did understand the power of education, I didn't understand the sacrifice to sit there and fucking be educated. So I'm shooting for the fun. Like I think you should have fun. And then once you get back, education will settle in. This dude, Nomadic Matt, I actually did a little research on this dude right here, Nomadic Matt, just to see. Um, I didn't see no pictures or learn about his background, but I know he's a, a, a backpacker enthusiast that's been backpacking for you know, since he was young, I think he was 20 something years old when he started to travel the world. And um, I think he's from Chicago or something. And then Chicago or New York. And then he gets back and he's just like, man, I need to build a foundation. So he built that website first, Nomadic Matt. And then he uh, did this foundation. But I think the first thing is to come up with a name. And then once you come up with the name, then we could do the paperwork for the LLC, the article. Send the article to the state, come back with the entity number. You take that entity number, you file that entity number as, an, as a nonprofit tax exemption. 
And then once you have that tax exemption paperwork finalized, you could then start collecting donations just off the premise. I mean, you got to have a business plan before that. I mean, that's if you want funding. You can always fund yourself. You know, most uh, government, well, from my research, any type of um, people who are companies, businesses, other nonprofits, government um, programs, they want you to have a full business plan with profit loss statements, all of the the uh, business laid out so that way they know what they're invested in and what have you but you can collect private donations just with the nonprofit status I mean, you can collect nonprofit I mean uh, private donations anytime but you know I think I want to do things right before I even try but it will be nice to do like a test run, you know, a test run where you you send some at least one to three people out and then get all the footage. You know, that footage is important. Good looking. Good looking, Bridget. The, the footage of their experience, the content. Whether it's building their own page, building their own production ideas, vision, sound. man, the, the thing, I get a lot of, uh, you know, backlash on it because it's like very, it's very extreme. Like no one does things like this, you know, no one, no one could, no one has, this isn't a popular idea. I mean, and I try to say, hey, it's not about making money. You know, this ain't this ain't about making money. This is about starting a a, a legacy. You know, it's about really like starting with the man in the mirror, like Michael Jackson say. You know, it's like we always want to do things and 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 change the world and be mad at politics, but we never want to like help thy neighbor. But uh, it's like an experiment. I hate to say, like, I took my boy out there. Uh, I thought one of my, it's like a co-worker. I was like, yo, you going to Thailand, you going to change your whole life. You going to see the struggle. You going to see what's real. Oh, you was talking about for the name? What'd you say? I really need your help. Help with what? I'm actually creating a band and would love to support that fully. I'm into videography, topography. Yep, helping to change the world. We're one step at a time. Hey, good looking. I'll, you know, I love to do everything myself, but I need all the help I can get. I tried to go live the other day, but it says I need 10,000 subscribers for the mobile. How did you do it with less than a thousand? Oh no. You tried to go live, but it says you need 10,000 subscribers. Maybe how, how, you know, maybe because your account is new too. Because I've had this account for like 10 years. So maybe they give me like a little extra ju juice because the account is so old. I probably had it over 10 years. But I know your name is probably pretty new because it says crypto. Yeah, I'm, I'm off the mobile. I'm off the mobile. I got my computer open. But I'm not on the computer right now live. Yeah, that might that might be that might be what it is. But that's crazy though. Ten thousand subscribers. Fuck. 
Like, I know, I know my, I think the, I couldn't do this to get to 10,000 subscribers. I don't think I have enough energy to do all that. That shit is tough. I mean, like, if you really want subscribers, you got to kind of be desperate. You got to, like, do desperate. You got to make desperate um, description names and stuff. You got to, like, really. I got lucky that, I mean, the my new subscriptions is, like, really. I only get, like, one new subscriber a day or something like that now. But, um. I don't want to do all that desperate stuff. I feel like the subscribers that I have are quality. And that's all I need. You know, because you guys like pump me up and help me with ideas and help me refine ideas. Like, to be honest with you, I just came up with this nonprofit idea like a few weeks ago. I only been tubing for like six weeks. Crypto Q, oh, for Q&A, they found out it was harder than I thought. Yeah, that's, that sucks. About to twist this blunt with the key foil. Ooh, that sounds stony. It's just what I need before bed. You make me want to twist up another one of these. My mom, I just dropped my mom off some of this. She love it. I mean, it smells hella good, but it's just a little too airy. A little bit, but uh, I can't go live with Instagram crypto. Oh, you can't go live. Well, he should. But he want to go live on the tube. On the tube. And you go live on the Rise app. Man, I went, I went hard on that Rise app a few days ago. I went hard on it. So, let me just push out a couple of these. Repeat yourself. I mean, the more you say it, the more you better. Um, I like the liberation that comes with it. It's like part of that courage that I've been trying to hit on. It's like running from the slave owner. Right, it's like the underground railroad. Like it takes courage to hit up Harriet and run, but the soul gets tired of singing the sorrows during the slave times. I was I watched a few documentaries this Black History Month. And I remember reading something like the songs of a slave is the sorrows in the hearts of a slave or something where it was cold to where mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like all of just the the uh hymns, hues. I'm gonna need to do a video on how someone new gets set up with the weed room. I'm, uh, oh, I could do that. I'm about to clean that mug up. There's many le levels to growing weed though. I tell people who grow weed that they need to read a couple subscription of high times I mean, you don't really have to read a couple subscription of High Times anymore with all the information on the internet, but that's what I did. But I got started back, like in the 2000s, but just like experimental. 
Um, if you got action on clones, then you don't really need to learn how to clone. But cloning is a really simple process. A lot of these dudes on YouTube make it look real hard with all their solution. Um, all the things that they add. I don't really think you need to add all that stuff. I do add some stuff, but it's never the same. I just like stir it up, dip my plants, dip it in the organic bag, in the root and soil, throw it in. Yeah, I kind of like do things real, real quick. Slavery is in the mind nowadays. Slavery is in the mind nowadays, but economically it's existing. People I see trying to eat implants and fuck up the curing process. Curing is subjective. People, you could ask 10 growers how they cure and you will get 10 different strategies. Like, that's one thing about curing is everybody got different strategies. I stay for, I got a lot of understanding, just not committed. What you mean, Golden? I mean, honey? That you got a lot of understanding. Just not committed. Or commented. What's that say? My feed goes away on this phone pretty quick. But, uh. Yeah, so. I, it's a lot easier for people to be able to take off if s most of the finances are taken. Just say, watch you help. Help you. Oh, watching you help me understand what I'm on. Well, I, that's, you know, it, it took me a while. You know, I wish I got out of here as a teenager. Like I said earlier, I don't think he was in here. Uh, when, I, when I seen these youngsters, I was just like so impressed. Like, oh, you're going to be tomorrow's leader. I could see that right away. And I'm like, man, I wish that was me. I wish I was able to try. That was one of the missing pieces to my life. You know how like if your daddy wasn't there, you could say, hey, if my daddy was there to teach me, you know, the basic man things, then I'll be a better off person. You know, my daddy was there to teach me basic man things. So can't use that one. I mean, not even that I'm using it, but check check that off world uh influences could have came in next if i would have had the world influences psh, i would have went to college a long time ago you know, the gang of ideas great information cool lifestyle just need to figure the right platform style and stay committed thanks man uh, oh, Miss Honey, are you male or female? I keep saying man. But uh, of course, Miss Honey, you got to be human. But uh, yes, I do got to stay committed. Uh, it's not that hard. I think what the hardest thing right now is I'm struggling coming up with a name. I think a name is important for the instant identity if the name ain't right I mean you could do anything if the name ain't right you still I mean I there's still there's no made but it still has to be right no not for me the name for the foundation like the name for uh check out my friend's documentary if you get a chance it's called out of darkness. All right. 
Let me write it down. It's on YouTube. No, it's me so horny. What you talking about, Scott? <laughs> the foundation, the foundation for the um, traveling nonprofit. So you probably missed more detail, but um, it goes more in depth on what led to the conditions of black community today. I like to hear different perspective on what they think about, but I kind of thought about it deep, deep, deep from different perspectives, different people's um, criterias. And when it comes down to it, what made the black community what it is today is, um, I'll say it like this, is the security of uh, securing future finances from slave investments. So basically it's like, oh, so much money was invested into slavery, that money that investment made America rich, and they're still profiting off of that investment today. So I think with that basic, that basic technique is what keeps the circumstances of what they are. I mean, No, I, 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 I truly feel like it's all finances. Well, part of it is not true. I know that's probably a lot to type up, but slavery it was true. America became rich due to slavery. Um, 400 years of slavery. Uh, it's not all finances. Well, it's not all finances from everyone's experience, but the roots of the problem develop from the lack of finances. They do. The root of the problem stems from economic finances, whether it's high murders that's over slavery is mental and you know I think where you're going with there right there is that everyone still has the opportunity to pull themselves out of poverty in the US and yeah you're right I believe that but the numbers don't support that why don't the numbers support that? If everyone had the power to pull their self out of poverty, why isn't 100% of the people doing it? And the reasons that you come up with are, not only are they subjective, but they will be ambiguous. You know, they won't hold water to every situation. But then when you look at the finances of it, they tend to be more in common than any other answer. It's spiritual, not physical. I think using spirituality is like a trump card. You know, it's like, yes, everything can be spiritual, but it's a trump card for not coming up with a, with a full answer. 
What I mean by the film is they go into things like ancient Egypt. Oh, I never heard that term. Kimi, Kimet. That's dope. I like ancient Egypt. One thing I love about ancient Egypt is they found that the slaves in in Egypt that built the the pyramids had living quarters. That means they had rooms. Debt tax slavery. I don't like to use debt. I mean uh, tax as a as a bad thing. Of course, when the poor is, are, is overtaxed more than the rich, then that's bad, but tax is necessary. How can you say it's not finances when we had the Reagan era that introduced crack into the black communities? No one has realized your people are the chosen people. Is considered the blacks homeland of Egypt. History is rich. History is dope. It's important to know a little bit of everything. A lot of bit of everything. It's all been about dumbing us down. Yeah, big time. I, I totally agree with that. Dumbing us down. Not teaching us how to think critically. Um, we don't think critically. We just sponge, absorb everything. You can't teach me a goddamn thing because I watch TV on Comcast cable. What's up, Jay? In this piece, trying to come up with a name for a nonprofit. A nonprofit that's about travel, education, fun, more fun, budget travel, liberation. Like I said, part of getting out the country was liberation. And let me speak on that right quick. I think why I say it was. Liberating was because America teaches you that you live in the best country. The world is, is, is fearful. Um, just all these negative things. And then once you get away and you experience it, everyone embraces you. And it's like, man, I'm not even embraced in my own country. But as soon as I freaking bounce, everyone is just like, hey. I remember I went to Myanmar and I'm walking across the bridge and I'm seeing like these Myanmar people and they look weird. They're dark. Well, it's probably not the best way to start. They're dark, but they're a little on the brown side, you know. Inner city international travel game. I kind of like that. Let's see. City international nomads. Travel live, laugh, love, till. Travel live, laugh, love, till. It's not bad, not bad. Good start, good idea, make money. What's up, Jimmy Dice? We're trying to come up with a name for this nomad traveling experience, experiment, you know, non-profit exemption status. Um, the goal is to, like uh, me so horny just said, freaking, um, no, Jake said, travel, live, laugh, love. That's, that's gonna happen. So those are key, key points. So I like, at first I said started from the bottom foundation. 
because I like that term. Started from the bottom and I'm here because it doesn't have to be at the top. It's your top, you know, your top and your soul, you know, because I know sometimes I'll like, like one time we went to this tall building in Bangkok and we just went up there to take a picture. And while we was up there taking pictures, it was like, we were all excited. And we like, whoa, look at this. Started from the bottom and I'm here. Like, it was just like, it was dope. It was like, whoa, this is fun. Like, made it to a new a new experience, you know, a new, a new accomplishment. It wasn't like a monumental thing, but for, at the time it was. So, started from the bottom foundation. Uh, but I can't really get away with that. I don't really like it that much. Yeah, I hear you. What, Miss Corns? What's up? I'm still laughing at that uh, that post she did. Anybody know Miss Corns? She's funny. What up, Chris? Hey, so I'll tell you what we was talking about right quick. I'll run you up. Damn, a few people just jumped in. How is that Falcon coin going? Oh, it's going real good. <laughs> I talked about Falcon coin already. Um, I already warned you. So we don't have to go in detail. We all know about that. We 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 already knew it was going to happen. So I was thinking about making a video about it a couple of days ago or yesterday, but what for? If you like food, that's what channel is about. Oh, who? Yours? Your channel's about food? Oh, okay, yeah, I see it. All right. I'll check that out. Of course I like food. I need food. I missed that part. Good. And cause you already know. Hey, uh, so corns. Right now what we doing, what we've been talking about is coming up with a name for this foundation I'm trying to put together about traveling. About liberating young people's mind through international travel like you know about because you have experienced that and you embraced it and you still ain't been back but I'm trying to do the nonprofits of sending people to other countries to learn a different perspective on life and from my experience, I came back with more ambition than ever um, from a two month crusade. I'm thinking that it has, you have to experience two to three months straight. All the new folks got throughout the company's name for Kim, what? New folks got it. Yeah, everybody got to throw out a new name on um, a foundation. Now, the age I'm aiming for, that's a good question because we found this one online called Flight. It's called Take Flight. Um, that one was called Flight. It was Foundation for Youth Learning, um, something like that. Um, it's a pretty good idea. And earlier today, I was thinking in the car that I should come up with a, um, an acronym. Um, just to recap right quick, Foundation for Leadership and Youth Travel Education. So this is like, I found this this foundation today, 420 Travel LLC. Hey, the thing is the weed ain't good outside of this place. You know, we got the best over here. And once you smoke here, you don't want to smoke nowhere else. All right. So Flight is a nonprofit organization that empowers youth living in underserved communities through transformative traveling experience. So like I seen this and I was like, whoa, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was saying. So I'm ready to get started on this. Um, I'm ready to invest into it and, and do the LLC. Um, I'll, I'll do the article myself. I'll, download that shit off the internet fill in the blanks 
and mail it in to the to the state. It shouldn't be too hard. You got ten bands on it, man. That is plenty. You know, ten bands will be able to to support five. From my math that I did, at about ten dollars a day, at about seventy days, and the flight. Plus emergency money, maybe like safe house money, and just a few extra expenses. I'm coming up with $2,000 a person for 70 days. I think that's a cheap investment into someone's life that's going to not only change their life, but we can watch that, you know, because part of the requirement is going to be to document everything. You got to, you know, you going to have the, 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 the selfie stick. You gonna have a wait? Do you know about David Google goggles? He's a pretty inspiring dude. Listen to him might give you motivation and pursue the NPO dream. All right, I'll I'll check that out, Jake. David goggles. Write it down. Right, it's, it's, it's cheap, right, just to do it yourself. You don't need legal zoom for this. Yeah, for that, you should write a throw, right, you gotta have a business plan. That's the only way you're gonna get funded. That's the first step in getting it. Right, Diane, you're absolutely right. You're freaking using your, your marbles. And that's why I'm at the first step of coming up with the name. So before I can get into this plan, I need to nail this name down. That's at the top of the business plan, business name. I'm at step one. You might need a CPA. Okay, so not that young. So Diane, I know you super young and you think I'm talking about kids, but I'm actually talking about, somebody asked me what was my age target and I, I slipped my mind, I didn't get to it. So this foundation right here is for really young people. You see them? Almost all people of color as well, which is, just what I'm thinking. I mean, it don't matter. I'm not saying that nobody, that a certain person don't go, but in mine, this is the, the idea. But um, I'm thinking a little older than, than that age. So 18, 18, because I'm not supervising nobody. This isn't a supervised trip. This is a, uh, uh, you you were here earlier, 18 through 25. Yeah, exactly. That's what I've been saying. I mean, but I can't say like, hey, if you're 30 years old, you cut off because I didn't get away till I was 30, you know. So it's all about um, if you a leader, if you a leader and just don't have the tools you know, but you know you're a leader. You just don't got the the right tools. And that's the that's who I think will will automatically migrate to this experience. You thought I was going through cryptocurrency to fund it? Yeah. Cryptocurrency is an easy way to fund this because most of my friends are crypto enthusiasts so yeah definitely um that will be easy i'm 22 so that's why i'm super interested in your plan hey good because i'm still looking for leaders who want to take advantage of this opportunity i think um 22 is a perfect age um diane it's like uh Sometimes it comes after. Okay. Need to slow you down. Yeah, this name is... I actually just came up with this plan like three weeks ago. 
and it's been something that's been weighing on my mind every day because I did start a, a that um, one million in one year cryptocurrency website, which I was trying to do it as like a second business, but you know that shit is just becomes too stress stressful. So I'm not even thinking about that no more. I'm trying not to think of no monetary goals. I'm thinking about all personal inspiration goals. And if I could see one person live this out, make videos. Hey, I think that's going to be the easiest way. So I imagine the one person get out, make videos the whole time, selfie stick, show all the small stuff like your plane ride, what you eat, where you sleep, where you go next. Um, document all that. Document it and you'll be straight. Yeah, I do got a Steemit account, but I don't use it because it was the, I uploaded videos a couple of times and it was kind of hard. Like they, they kept getting kicked back, kicked back. And then once I did upload them, I didn't have that many um, subscribers or followers or nothing, so I don't use it. But I should, I should get into it. I just been trying to figure out what's the purpose, you know. And I didn't want to like just keep making videos, videos, desperate for hits, you know, using those those keywords to that are the hot topics just to get hits and because i would have been making videos about six nine about celebrity basketball super bowl i did do a super bowl though see that was part of like desperate for hits and when you put a super bowl topic on the super bowl weekend i mean super bowl description on super bowl weekend that's thirsty for hits if you ask me Hey, make money with crypto. I know you will, though. You always, you always sincerely come up with good ideas. This dude make money with crypto was coming up with token ideas. I think like on the first day I went live and started talking about it. It was probably like two weeks ago. He was talking about um, uh, he could come up with a token and have people donate two tokens to send them on like special adventures like say you was like you you learned that in a certain town they got a certain um landmark or famous um traveling destination and you say hey go to this destination i'll shoot you two tokens and boom they go they film it they document it right I did research on government money that's available for crazy ideas like this. And of course, if you got all your paperwork right, you can get those donations. Those, um, they call them um, grants, those grants. Actually in my neighborhood too, there's a, a economic development center that I tend to go to just to like learn different techniques and stuff. And just take advantage of the resources that they have and they walk you through it they walk you through everything and get you grants so as long as you got your business plan with your profit loss statements all those cpa documents right there you know the good thing is any of those documents you need you just google it download it fill it in and you you just did all the cpa work like my homies, they they still go to H and R Block to do their taxes. I'm like, homie, just come over here. Not only will I not charge you, but I will help you get doubled in what freaking H and R Block give you, and it ain't even fraud. You just gonna itemize everything. And so what? So what if you ain't got no receipts? You ain't gonna get audited. You only made thirty five thousand dollars. The freaking auditor makes a hundred and forty thousand. How she look auditing someone who only made thirty five thousand? That's like a that's like a well eaten plankton. <laughs> but so this name World Nomads. 
walkers. I'm gonna have to sleep on it. I'm gonna have to sleep. Like I haven't been. But I'm glad I was able to entertain the idea. I'm glad I was able to get a bunch of feedback. Take off. Blast off. That was, that was pretty interesting. I didn't catch all that, Diane, when you were like, uh, a program for people who are dying from illnesses, yeah. But see, then I'm gonna be, see the dope thing about my idea is that I don't need to go, right? So I could set, I could, you know, share the information, like share the research, in terms of like <clears throat> the mentality of a backpacker. Like, uh, for example, before I ever backpack, I learned about what the essentials of backpacking is. Like people think backpacking right away is uh, sleeping in a tent. And it sometimes you could sleep in a tent and that's that's kind of fun. But on the day in and day out, you're basically staying in hostels, some hotels, very little hotels, because hotels can be expensive, guest houses. You kind of want to stay away from the guest houses, too, because those can be a little pricey. But what I mean by pricey is like $10 a night for a guest house. Um, I like to stay in hostels. The beds, you could get a bunk bed in a hostel between three on average between three and eight dollars a night and what i like about those is that the first day you go in oh man you make so many friends like the bigger the dorm the more friends you make i remember one night i was in cambodia in Phnom Penh, and they say a lot they try to scare you in Phnom Penh with all of the literature like from um the nomad magazine and travel Magazine books and all that. I can't think of what that damn book is called. But um, they try to tell you it's a lawless land or whatever, whatever. But we, the hostel, it was, I think it was like 14 people in this room, right? And uh, one, I think two bathrooms. And the bathroom had like a vent on the door so you could hear right through the door. <laughs> And the girls was in there cutting it up. <laughs> we out there just rolling. They come out like, ah. ready? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, ready. <laughs> Let's go out. But we, it was like 14 people and 11 of us went out. We all got on the same, we all went to the same club. It was like 11 of us from nine different nationalities, nine different countries. That shit was like, I felt like I, I, I experienced every country through them, you know. But yeah, that was a good night. That was in, um, was I in Phnom Penh? I was in Phnom Penh, yeah. Cause I only went to three cities in Cambodia. I'm Phnom Penh, Siem Reap, and Oh, this place called Sanukville. Sanukville. Maybe lose of social elements, but can get some nice deals on Airbnb. And that's that's the problem though, Scott. Is you don't want to lose those social elements. Those social situations is what's so valuable. Because we're we don't have that social life here. It's like all like I seen somebody, who was this? I tend to watch um, DJ Ghost, 
DJ goes on like some some reviews. I like his grind. I like how he came up. I like how he getting like a thousand subscribers a day now. Man, I'm watching the dude. I, I, I give him his props. But this dude was talking about stop snitching. Like you supposed to mind your business and stay in your lane. And I don't agree with that. I think if your mama was getting jacked, my nigga, you will be upset, hurt. If your community didn't step in and help, you know, the, 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 the stop snitching thing, that's, that's turning the, the cheek, a blind eye. That, that's not, that's not how it's supposed to be. They say, like, one thing about in Cambodia, it's like a lawless land, they say, because, like, the police station closed down early. Like, let's say the police station at about 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, the police station closed. The police go home. They go to sleep. And then you think, like, wait, what if you need a police after hours? The neighbors going to come out with a stick and whoop your ass. They ain't going to just let you, like, Destruct the the community. The neighbors is gonna come out and freaking uphold the law. That's not snitching. That's taking care of your of your of your family, of your friends and family. So I don't know. I don't know how I got on that, but. That experience is necessary. But learning all about the ins and outs of, of travel, like for example, when I first got to uh, Bangkok, I was scared. I made I may actually made a video. Um it was a Kanye West video. No, it wasn't a Kanye West video, it was a a video of me uh bumping Kanye West. And uh, I was like filming out the window and then filming like up the street and then like filming the hostel and the bed and stuff. And I was like, I was trying to relax, but I was low key, not very comfortable. Um, I'm going to say I wasn't very comfortable because of the courage I was still kind of trying to build to travel. It was like some anxiety. Watch y'all live. Y'all got time here. Watch this video. That's it. See, like, I, I was so, like, not comfortable. I, I had to, I had to, like, do a video from inside the, um, inside the room. But right after that, a chick, a white girl was like, hey, we're going to Bangkok. Uh, we're going to the weekend market. I'm like, oh, okay, have fun. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. She's like, you should go. I'm like, uh, I'm chilling here in the hostel. She's like, there's nothing to do here. Let's go. So I was like, uh, okay. You know, oh, first of all, 
It was the first time I met her. She was white. I had anxiety. But she had so much love in her heart. It was like, how could I not take her up on her offer? You know, she came like so genuine, you know. So I was like, hell yeah. Okay, I'll go. And I ended up meeting like four other people. We all went together and we ended up getting close. And we ended up all going to the next city and then to the next city. Yeah, that was the beginning of how we built the group right there in Bangkok. I think I went there not knowing nobody and I left there taking a bus to the to another city up north, like a six hour bus ride with probably about six people. Not everybody went on the bus. People went different ways, but we made it up there. What up, Tommy? Man, you missed out. We was talking about um, this nonprofit thing. So, yeah, I read your comment yesterday or day before I replied to it about the nonprofit. Thanks for your feedback. Thanks for uh, the positive words, too. Appreciate that. But yeah, we was trying to come up with a name. Um, I got to start this article and start putting more energy behind it. So that way we can, uh, you know, build on it. I miss this lady. This lady was so nice. Watch. That lady was nice. She passed now shots. We we didn't even buy those shots. She freaking just pulled them out because she wanted to show the love. That's how much fun she was having where she wanted to share her bottle with everybody. It's another example. That was actually up in this little town called Pi. P A I. But um, so yeah, I'm gonna sleep on it. I'm gonna come up with um, I gotta come up with something. So as soon as I come up with something, I'll throw it out there and see what y'all talking about. On Wilshire Drive. And one of those high rises. Man, matter of fact, I think we're going to be out on Wilshire tomorrow. Yeah. We ain't going to be in the high rises, but we'll be on the roof. Tearing some shit up. But yeah, it will be nice to get a real office, huh? Tss. Looking down on D. Yeah. One day. But, um, so yeah, we going to sleep on it and, uh, see what I come up with. <laughs> it's just about committing to it and then just sticking with it. You know, the name ain't really nothing. It's all about the story. Like the camera ain't nothing. It's all about the damn story. Right? That's the plan. Shoot, I guess I need to freaking get some sleep though. Oh, damn, look, this is my dog right here. This dog died, but she's so sweet.
She was a good dog. She died because she had she was having seizures. She was having a gang of seizures. And I'm like, I tried like a bunch of different medications on her from the vet. And um, man, she was just going through it. She was just suffering, suffering, suffering. And one day it just got real bad. She was so pretty, but had to, had to put her down. They couldn't find nothing. I mean, that diff I tried like three or four different medications and none of them will work. So the doctors are like, we got to give her an MRI. She need to have a brain scan. And then I'm like, I couldn't afford all that. So, and then and plus, if I did pay for the MRI, did a brain scan, and then they find a tumor in her brain. And what are we going to do then? Have a, a surgery? Nah, can't do the surgery. It's too expensive. But, um. Hey, mom. Look, hey, Diane, that's my mom right there, Crystal Roberson. <laughs> mom, you should look up Diane. She's a, um, a hip-hop star. <laughs> you have a good story, Ken. Let it be known when I travel for the first time. I had a similar experience as you. Don't give up the vision. That idea will work. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate that, Tommy. You know, it's 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 an experiment, but I really feel confident about that experiment. Yeah, it's it's one of those um experiments that's it, it I know for a fact I know for a fact but one thing that concerns me is I, I start to say I took my boy out the country with me one time he was gone for about I think we was gone for three weeks and man he struggled he struggled but I think he has some personal issues that he was struggling with, like financial issues. I'll be real. He told me he had more money than he really did. I don't know why he would do that, you know. And I even offered to come up with a loan for him. You know, I was like, yo, I can get you a G, which is way than enough money than you need to travel. But he didn't pay his bills before he left. His girls having, yeah, I could go on and on. I don't think he watches my YouTube, so I could say what I want. Yeah, it was bad. I bet you the reason why my mom didn't say nothing is because she over there Googling real slow. She's trying to see. Uh, did y'all see uh, Diane's rap video, rap song? Man, I I listened to it the first time, but I didn't I didn't catch it all. I couldn't hear it that good. And then I think it popped up again and something told me to watch it again. And then I watched I listened to it again and um I was embarrassed for my man I actually liked that dude when I first did my first Big Connect video, he left me some very inspiring comments, you know, just like giving me tips on what I should do. He's like, yo, you should get a camera, you should do more videos. And look, <laughs> he said, I know you, you that's a good that was pretty fast that time, huh? That was pretty good. She able to find me. So you ain't that slow. But um, what was he saying? Yeah, so he was he was just telling me a bunch of positive things. And you know, on YouTube, you can get a lot of negative things. So you got to soak up the positive things. So, um, And then I was checking them out. 
I think he's from like Dubai or something. United Arab Emirates or somewhere. But um, and then I watched your spit on him, and I was like, you put just because you put his name in the. Uh, I heard I, mean, I like halfway through it. I'm like, wait, let me see who she's talking about. So then I copied and pasted the name, and then I I was like, oh wait, damn. You just like smashed, you just took all his stripes away for that. That's, I mean, not me saying it, but the internet might feel that way, you know. But I see why. <laughs> yeah. But now we all know better on what not to do. Right? But um, look, make money with cryptos. He just went to go watch it. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. Now I gotta, I gotta say this, girlfriend. Um, I gotta say this. The the jacket. The, the 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 outfit the the picture is all right let me just be real on the song the the picture is sexy between one and ten it's like it's like a tasteful sexy though all right, it's not like a, a let me put it out there sexy. It's like a, between one through ten, I'll say like a seven or an eight in terms of like respectful sexy, your picture on the album song, the disc record. All right, but I bring that up because it's kind of like giving... It's saying it's it's saying what you said, but then it's also giving out the permission for him to like you more so, right? Because that picture that you posted on your song is not a picture that's been circling around the internet. It's like a new picture, right? So it's like while I freaking tell you off, I'm gonna show you what you're missing out on. <laughs> I'm like, wait, 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 because you, that picture's going to make him not leave you alone. I know if you did a diss track to me like that in a whole song, yeah, a whole song and uh, had that picture on the cover, psh, I wouldn't stop. <laughs> I wouldn't stop. He go, he go call you tonight. So more watch. I guaranteed it. I got something that I only been out for two days. Man, in make money with crypto. In the description, she got the the link and the name. So look them up. I'm pretty sure you've seen him around. Okay. He doesn't apparently need permission to stop. Yeah. But I know you guys will like it. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, I like one part of that picture actually. Your hip. It looks like you're sitting on something brown. I just see this little small hip and then this like little meat popping out that look like a water bag you sitting on. Do you got booty implants? I've been noticed that's a trait from booty implants. 
That's just that's just smooth. I I think it's tasteful. I mean, it is a little extra, but it's tasteful. Yeah, <laughs> that shit is so funny. Hell no, I don't come on. You just got a you just got a little little extra meat right there. We need more of this in crypto. Hey, that. And then the the rhymes is pretty funny too. I mean, like it's a, I think it's a legit little diss track for crypto. Yeah, I think it's legit. And then I I think when I heard you say something like "You got a hundred thousand dollar car and still live with your mama or your daddy," do you even have a daddy? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? So that's when I was like, let me look this thing up. And I'm like, oh no. Yeah. 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 That's pretty funny. But he got a nice little um a little little fan base. He got a nice little fan base. I I picked up on him. They're fake. I picked up on him because he he reached out to me. He, you know, he took the time to to show me some love. So, you no, know, whenever whenever I get love from somebody, I gotta like appreciate it and embrace it. I mess with all y'all. You know, I haven't looked through his videos that that deep. So, but yeah, that's that is uh, hilarious. And I was freaking rolling. I don't know. I think me as a as a young man in these trying to trying to you know. Fine, Miss Wright. I would be so embarrassed if somebody put me on blast like that. I mean, I think that's the worst. That's the worst to be put on blast. Damn. Got dusted on his face. That's cold. I'm trimming all the hairs off this. I saw he was getting what? How long have you lived in South Central? Uh, I don't consider this area South Central. It could be considered South Central because it's near USC. I mean, especially from the outside looking in. But uh, it's more like Jefferson Park, mid city area. Uh, I've been, my grandpa actually, this is his house. I live in my grandpa's house. <clears throat> he died about 12 years ago, though. And I stepped up and just been trying to preserve it. It's a hundred year old house. This bad boy, old. LA is old. So this house was built in 1917, 1916, 1916. So this house is, it take a lot of work, a lot of work. I do like 90% of the stuff myself, everything. We just finished the driveway last month. Fuck that. Tearing up the old driveway and moving all the dirt, the grunt work, I did it. It was, it was, I got a little frustrated at one point and was like, what did I get myself into? But it was rewarding once it was done. When I first moved in, the, um, 
the toilet was falling in the floor. Like it was caving in. Because the leak caused the floor to rot. The rot caused the toilet. Yeah. So it was it was a, a chore. I need you to make an intro song to my YouTube video. For sure. Hey, the funny thing is Diane did a little a video where she she did a little grill. Carrot! What's up my boy? Carrot is from Australia. I wanna I wanna I wanna click up with Carrot too around the world. He wanna cool cool dude. About to chop some red, you know. Look, I'm I'm breaking up some right here. Figure since I'm still up, I might as well smoke one. But um what was I about to say? Oh, so what's up with the neighbor Paco? <laughs> You was you seen that huh the other night what was that the other night I was live and my base my base head neighbor came knocking on the door talking about she need a wrench to fix her bike right so I'm like all right whatever and I was live so I'm like filming it and then uh Paco comes out and he had on a jacket and some underwear so I'm like, I seen that he was wearing something funny. So I'm like, yo, Paco, what you wearing? And he's like, oh, look, my underwear. And I'm like, what? So him and my neighbor was, I mean, him and the bass head was out there dancing. Yeah, I don't think. Good thing he wasn't drinking because he probably would have tried to put it on that bass head right there. <laughs> Paco was always turned. You stole that lighter from Paco, huh? Did, no, Paco don't. He never have no lighter. I could have not took the lighter from Paco. He was out there dancing in his drawers at night with the with the bass head on the bike. That shit was funny as hell. That was a good night. I like my neighbors, though. They never steal nothing from me or nothing. No, they haven't. It's so fucking dry down here. South uh, ounce people charging nine a thousand dollars. Oh, for a QP instead of the average seven fifty. Hey, nine hundred for a QP ain't bad. Nah, they was they wasn't even on. I don't even think Paco was drinking. And then my other neighbor. I think she actually stopped smoking. I think she actually stopped smoking because she was having all these health issues and stuff. So I think she's trying to live. You know, it's a shame. Sometimes it takes us to get sick before we stop like smoking. I got to start stop smoking these blunts before I get throat cancer. Man, you were supposed to stop smoking anyway, Carrot. I remember you said that. Yeah. Only 2 million people in my state. They got states in Australia? <laughs> I guess Melbourne is not a city, that's a state. Organic Swishers? Nah. They don't got no organic swishers. I've never heard of organic swishers. I like glass blunts. We call them, uh, remember crypto? I told you we call them steamrollers out here. Melbourne is the only city of Victoria. Also, Victoria is the state. Cause I look at Australia and I don't see no lines on that mug. It looked just like the whole country is the state. <laughs> Ooh, like in London, there ain't no states in London. Oh, the glass. Oh, okay, so 
It's not a steamroller. Just look up glass blunt. I got my laptop open so I can. Oh, okay. And then you pack it from the back. Or you and then would you just light it with a um, lighter? I've never seen that. I can see a 46 minute video. Oh man, that looks like a love toy. What? Oh, that's pretty cool. Damn. You know what? I figured out why I smoke blunts. It's because I like the cigarette, I mean, the, um, the tobacco that comes off the blunt. Like, I always get that. Like, why is your blunt so skimpy? And I'm like, it's so skimpy because I think I like the tobacco taste. It's like the Europeans smoke the spliffs. You want one of those glass blunts? All right, mom, I'll send you one. I got your address, 5656 Shasta Lane, Unit 55. La Mesa, California. Everybody send her crypto. That's my mom right there. She my biggest fan. I went to go see my mom this weekend. She lived in uh, San Diego. <laughs> I actually went party in Mexico and I stopped by there to drop her off some weed. Twenty, thirty per gram, it makes like seven, yeah. Dynamite comes in small packages. They have big explosions. Oh, it should look good. He actually went with me to Mexico last night. That fool out drank me. And he stayed up longer than me. I like, I think I went to sleep like 6.30 in the morning. And he was still up when I went to sleep. I'm like, damn. And when we woke up, he wasn't even hung over like I was. I was really like, damn, damn. But yeah, he put, um, he got his ears sewed back together. You know, stretching his ears out like, I'm not even exaggerating. This shit was at least this big. I should have made a YouTube video of his shit. <coughs> Was Karkin alt altcoin short <coughs> eleven day return on investment on what prostitutions prostitutors? It's taking you eleven days to get your money back from investing in a in a streetwalker. Whoa, that's real slow. I'm getting my money back the same day. Those new shoes I bought you, I'm getting triple that. If I got to get you a dress, I'm getting five times that. Nah, but the problem is, 
Is that some stressful ass money? What up, Bud Light? They seen you in a minute. That's some stressful money. I remember the first time I made, I earned my first hustle dollar. My mom knows what's up already, so I can't even hide it. Cause she already know. It was from this chick, her name was Lolita. Beautiful. She's still my mom's friend on Facebook. She is really a beautiful girl, but she had a lot of issues. I didn't realize that, you know, to where, man, she made me quit my job. I was making at least a thousand dollars a day. And um, life just changed. Life was changed. We was traveling all over. We was partying every night. She had a gang of friends. She, she'll make new friends every night. But if you didn't deal with everything she was was dishing out I ain't no pushover so I ain't gonna deal with nothing you know and then I just I just realized how vulnerable I was it was like this is how it felt it's like investing all your money into BitConnect and then that motherfucker crash how you gonna eat you ain't so i seen that vulnerability and i'm like oh hell no this lifestyle ain't for me i gotta get my money three ways guaranteed with no one else deciding when they gonna pay but, oh don't remind me about that bit connect right yeah, my bad. Well, I think I started this uh, live telecast podcast, YouTube cast. That's what it is, YouTube cast. Talking about that stupid Falcon coin. I mean, we all seen it coming. I remember I had to try it, though, because I think one day I got I got drunk and I'm like, let me try it. That's cool. You and your mom get along so well. Oh, yeah, I sure. You know, that's on the real. That's probably why I haven't got married. Because I can share my life with her. So it's like, I ain't in a hurry to get married if I could share my life with her. But she want me to get married and have kids and all that good stuff. Yeah, that. No, but I didn't lose a lot of money in that in the platform. I just lost money just like to play. I just wanted to just play with it and see what type of return and what have you. But I didn't go in like I did on the BitConnect. Nah. I already knew better. And plus I posted that video about Falcon Coin and everybody gave me so much bad slack on it. I mean not because um they were hating on me, but because it wasn't a good investment. Yeah, right. For real. I should. I should have made money for real. Because then you would have made, you would have doubled it and tripled it by now. So, yeah, you absolutely right. But, um, like that fine, that fine coin, that bad boy is a, there's another one that I was going to go down next. Now go buy some scratchers. I might as well. You have At least you'll be left with the scratcher. You know what I'm saying? I actually, I actually been buying some weed. I bought weed two times. And I just barely pulled the Girl Scout out today just barely did first time in like two weeks but uh yeah i guess you know one thing i don't like about this mobile app is man i don't get any options to like look back through messages and look at who's in the room and 
I can't do none of that. Let me see. Nope. 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 Does nothing. You still buy even though you grow? I do. You know why? <clears throat> because this batch didn't come out too good. The reason why is because I left town a couple times. <clears throat> One of the reasons. Another reason was I had too much light coming in at sleeping time. Because I don't seal up every nook and cranny. I got fresh air coming in and then a little light comes through there. But this time I usually cover it up better and this time I didn't. And I thought it would be fine. But it, the buds didn't tighten up. I had a few that tightened up away from the light, but where the light was at, it came out like this. No, it's a little too airy for my liking. No problem, Carrot. Hey, good, good talking with you, my boy. You always come and stop by. Man, that Riz, that Rise app, is, it's, it's okay. It's just, you know, it's a bunch of little funny people on there. I checked it out a couple times. You know, if it ain't if it ain't your friends, it's, it's they a little funny, a little weird, weird people in there. Personalities. Bunch of like transgender people. It's an app. It's called Rise App. The homie ran me up on it before it came out. There's a few things good about it. It's like you can get they pay you in like heart love and then with that heart love you could transfer over to to like a crypto and then that crypto you can trade for bitcoin so you can almost make money with this rise app i just don't know that much about it in terms of earning money yet but i do have it and i have used it a couple times but um yeah i, I the other night, I think uh, when I downloaded it, I went live and then I got about five other people to download it and we all tried it. What's your top three apps that you use every day? Well, I don't use Instagram. I don't because there's too many Instagram models. They, they, man, they be doing extra on that Instagram too. To where if I had that Instagram, I'll be... I'll look at it too much. So I don't have Instagram. I do use Facebook to keep in touch with all my friends, especially like international friends and family. Everybody who's on my Facebook, I, I know them. All right, for sure, I'll let you know. And then um, I don't use Twitter. I do have, but I, I never... I'm not a I'm not a Twitter. I'm not a Twitter. Um, to be honest with you, I only maybe I have Facebook. I still got my Facebook. My Facebook is fly. Made my own background and everything. Now that was the first one, Facebook. I was on that Facebook tough. But then uh, I think I just, I mean, not Facebook, MySpace. MySpace. I'm on that MySpace. In my own background and everything on MySpace. Let's have Facebook again. That's how you know I'm getting tired and high. But um, shout out to everybody that came through today. All that valuable input. I was, you know, every day I talk about it and it just inspires me to move forward with it. Move forward, move forward. So, like Diane said, I gotta start this article. I gotta start this financial paper, this business plan, and uh, let it rip. I appreciate it. I, I really feel like like I'm moving in the right direction once I get some footage 
of them. Hey, who was that that said they was 22? I forgot. Someone told me they was 22. Making oh that's Bridget. Bridget, you male or female? I mean it I think it don't matter. I hope like eventually to have males and females. I think it's very empowering for women like to I always say I'm gonna raise my daughter to be ready for it. I thought so, but yeah, females is. I think it's matter of fact. I met this girl the other day who's going to Thailand by herself. Um, I think she said in April, and I asked her if she would be. I mean, through Facebook, cause I met her and then we became friends on Facebook. I sent her a few instant messages, but um, she. She replied a couple times, but she doesn't reply. So, I don't think she's going to do it based on the lack of replying, but be nice. Why don't you have a crypto donation address? When, you know, I, originally I was like, man, I'm going to just get some money and then put it together, do some films, show my subscribers and do it like that. But recently, I decided to just do the paperwork first. Do the work, do the painstaking work. And, and that way, um, I think, I think it'd just be better. Um, I've done businesses with no license and stuff before and, and then went back to do the license and I didn't regret it, but I kind of, because there's, I got some advice from a couple people too that said, just do the nonprofit um, article first and then more people will be eager to invest that way, you know, so, but yeah, just keep in touch with me. Um, I, I have a feeling that I'm going to be able to to earn, to to build uh, all the money necessary to make this work. Like my mom was saying, whoa, that's going to be expensive. You're going to spend a lot of money on this. And I'm like, no, nah, this is, this is going to be, you know, a nonprofit that I'm sure that a lot of people are just going to want to see this play out. So... And then a lot of times people are like, no, you need a lot of help. And I'm like, no, nah, not to start off, you know, because it's not about babysitting people. It's just about um, putting them on a path. And then once they get on the path, they ain't going to have no choice but to adapt and move through, move through, move through, move through. And if they could document that with a selfie stick and bring the footage back and upload it every day. And then, you know, once you get multiple people, you have an editor, you have a writer, you have a light dude, you have a sound dude. Maybe you put together some real productions in no time. And that's what we want to see. Hey, I appreciate that. If I came from, I would help you if I came from London. Man, I, I think eventually people is going to want to go all over the world. So the more worldwide hubs or like catapults because it's all about figuring out what you want to do once you get there so like i started to say earlier when i went to bangkok and then i took off to the next city i had nothing planned in terms of like itinerary where i was going to go next but because of the friends and relationships that you make that all just changes the course of your destination, your next destination. So um, I have no worries that the traveler will be able to adapt his trip 
You know, there should be rules like, hey, if two people go, you guys need to stay together. Um, that's just so that they can work together on 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 content. But even if they go separate and they each do their own content, it's like, hey, there's no rules. There's no rules. Maybe like a safe house where they can do what they want, either stay together, go different ways, and then meet back at the safe house in four weeks. And then they can go south from the safe house and go try out with south. You know, be all up to whoever's in charge of the hem. Leaders. We talk about leaders. But, um, Yeah, this is exciting to me. This is exciting to me. My dad's like, oh, that's too much work. You ain't got time for that. I'm like, this is, this is easy, you know? And everybody wants to chip in. See, that's one thing he's not recognizing, that everybody wants to trip in. Crypto donations you dress add to. Hey, I'm excited for you. It's Bridget, right? Bridget the Gene. Because if you're motivated to do it, I'm motivated to build the sponsorship for you to go. That's real. And I don't, I don't really think it's that difficult. I think with help of monetizing, um, donations, and maybe like selling t-shirts with the nonprofit's name on it, will earn enough money for three people in about a month, I think. Three people. So that would be $6,000 in a month. I think, okay, if I was trying to collect money, let's say from a tech community or any other type of community, those numbers might be a little high. But because most of the followers are crypto enthusiasts, just about everybody is doing okay. Hey, whoever, whoever want to go is who I want to go because I think it's all about that energy. How am I going to like try to convince someone who's on the fence next to someone who really want to go and like thrive? I'm after that, that, that driver. What type of band are you creating? You probably make too much to cooperate. You, well, don't count yourself out because it ain't about the money. It's about the experience and the money helps. So if you got money to go, then you don't need donations. Right? You can go as a as an overseer. You know, I don't think anyone needs supervisors, but maybe you can go and set up a safe house. Maybe you can go and set up a safe house, travel around yourself, and then come back to the safe house. And maybe I could earn so much money, I could even pay you for a service. Man, hey, Dre, you don't even need money. What you need to save money for is your bills for when you come home. I think that's important. So that way when you come home, you can come home to something. Cause I came home broke and I came home to $500. From ten, donations will be yes, right, Tommy. So once I once those that footage comes back, 
you know, because each person has to provide content. Hard eyes. And are we folks about how you should look at the world and approach everyone and everything with love, but it's mostly photography. That's interesting. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. Bridget, like, spread love. And a lot of times people, people don't want to hear that, but the people that do will embrace it. And I think only Americans don't want to hear it. And you're making a book, you're pretty active. For a 22 year old, you be working your butt off. I swear, the more money I make, the more I act broke. You know, me too. I try to save everything. I try to save as much as I could, you know, and, and, and invest. Don't accumulate costs that you can't pay. Right. Right. And that's what's dope about, I think the cost too is freaking pretty damn low. If you can if you can cheap, change people's life for the better, people will be get behind you. Right. Yeah. I feel that. People want to see other people do good. I'm willing to help in some fashion or another. I'm not trying to be responsible for all the miners, but if nothing else, I'll try to throw some notes at the project and spread the word. Hey, I appreciate that, Scott, and that's much love. And that's what I was trying to explain. I, miners, I don't want to take miners. I want to do 18 and up, you know, and that's, and not because I think miners aren't responsible. And I did travel with a few miners and they were 100% on top of their game. Um, so I know it could be done. You know, it's just out here, we, we, we treat our miners like irresponsible people. I mean, they kind of, I wouldn't say they, they kind of proved that, but it's easy to see them one mistake that a miner do and be like, oh, they proved they could be irresponsible, you know, but I'm definitely not focused on anyone under 18, um, 18 through I said 25, but there ain't no limit, you know, how can you deny, you know, a person an opportunity that really want to go? I think the people who really want to go will get the most out of it, too. I think someone like Bridget, that's, I think she's a leader based on her, her creativity, her ideas. And then willing to talk about it, too. Because it's one thing. Then, you know, you got those people that just talk, 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 talk. And never do no, no, no walk. I, I heard Stokely Car Carmichael say this. I'm going to try to remember this quote. He says, a man with no action. And all talk. Ah, can't do it. My bad. What Stokely Carmichael was saying, basically, a man that talks and doesn't do no action is blind. But the man that does action and doesn't do no talk is something else. I can't recall it, but you got to do both. That's what it gets to. You got to do both. You got to plan it out and then you got to walk the walk. Very necessary. You're 37. You make Bitcoin all day. Man, baller. What would you say, Dre? Most deaf ones who started off and go first will donate later. To them. Yep. Yep. And the dope thing, this is what's so dope about it. And this is what gets me excited the most, is that it's not expensive. 
See, we have a misconception about traveling and that it's expensive. That we got to stay in a resort. Then we look up the resort. I mean, it's like $180, $200, $300 a night. We got to take the flight. We look at America Airlines flights. And it's like $800, $900, $1,200, $1,400 round trip. As soon as we land, we know we got to take a taxi. We know the food's expensive. We know all the activities is expensive. We know we need like four, five thousand dollars to take with you on a four or five day vacation. So in all together, you spending about at least five thousand dollars per person on a week, five day vacation. So that instantly throws the vacation budget out of a lot of people's hands. And if you do have that money, who want to spend $5,000 on a five-day vacation? It just doesn't, doesn't seem too reasonable. But this budget traveling, backpacking, is affordable. So I, I come to the conclusion that to travel, to get a room, to eat to have fun um everything besides drinking should cost depending on what city between about i'll say between 10 and 20 dollars a day and that's doing everything so like you're gonna get to some cities where you pay like three dollars for your bed you spend like you know, two dollars, a dollar to two dollars on a meal, and um, you're gonna spend like a dollar on a taxi here, dollar on a taxi there. You know, you're gonna get out the day spending ten dollars, and then you're gonna have some days like in Bangkok where your room's gonna be twenty. I mean, your bed. I mean, ten. In Bangkok, the most expensive. I've seen some for twelve, but ten is about average. That's like the New York City in Southeast Asia. But, you know, there's other places too. It's not limited, like India. I met a lot of people that traveled India. And for months at a time, months. I know people who went there multiple times. Yep, India. I heard it was a lot cheaper than what it is now because I heard just they going through some major inflation over there. But um, it's still... It's still a good a good ride. But um shoot. I'm gonna sleep on this name. We go we gonna make it happen. Ugh. I'm about to hit the sack players. It's about bedtime. That's all I can do. That's Bitcoin money is fat these days. I need to figure out insurance. Protect yourself if someone dies or something tragic. You know, it's always good to have life insurance. You know, but like for example, they got an insurance called Nomad Insurance. It's like a hundred dollars, and it covers like. If, if something happened to you, if you get sick and you got to be hospitalized, it covers a few things. It's not a bad deal. Life insurance. Everybody should have life insurance. That's, that's, how, you, that's how generational wealth is accumulated. Um, you know, tragedies always happen. The younger you are, the better. I think, like, I was reading some statistic, like, I think only like 1% of life insurance is ever paid out. Like 1%. So the banks make a lot of money on life insurance. So you kind of got to be smart with that. And then a lot of life insurance plans is once you get there on terms, like a 20-year, 10-year, 30-year term. So once those terms is up, you don't get nothing. So you got to like... Educate yourself on those different life insurance policies. There's so many out there. So many, um, what they call them, um, 
products. No, you never do. You do whole life, right? Especially when you need someone goes with the organization gets hurt or something. Right, 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 right. Limited liability, all of that uh, liability insurance is definitely necessary. There are going to be accidents. It's just no getting out of that. I remember one time I went, I fell on a on a scooter and I hit a turn and it was wet and sandy and I slid. Ah, put the bike down, scraped up my leg. I scraped it up bad. But I went, they didn't have no, no hospitals on the island and the island was cracking and I didn't want to leave. It was actually my last week. And um, I kind of suffered the whole week on the island. I didn't swim, I kept my foot up. But at night, this girl that I met from Norway, she wanted to dance. And I'm like, I couldn't say no. It was one of those situations where you knew you shouldn't go dancing, but she's like, please, please. Please take me to dance and know you could dance. I'm like, okay. So the whole night I'm just dancing, spinning her, picking her up. And she's like, you're so great. You're the best dancer ever. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, just imagine if my foot was feeling good. I wake up in the morning, my foot be like, and I had to, I'd be on the beach with my foot up in the hammock, trying to heal. <laughs> oh, this is dumb. You get them, you get them Norway butt cheeks. Hey, I, she promised me, she's like, we're going to go back to your room and we're going to do nothing but sleep. And I was tired. My foot hurt. I'm like, cool, no problem. Go back to the room. I go to sleep. <laughs> She's like waking me up. You're snoring. You said you're going to sleep, right? Well, that's what happens when you sleep. <laughs> Noises happen. So I fall back to sleep. She wakes me up again. I'm like, if you wake me up one more time, that means you want to get it. <laughs> hey, what up, DJ? DJ Underground in this mug. You up early just like me, headed to work. No, shh. Nigga, it's one o'clock. Nigga, I ain't been to bed yet. <laughs> you need to, yay. Nigga, you know what happened for sure. She freaking woke me up again. So you know, you know, you know what happened. You know, that was, that was a good time. Even though I was hurt. And she, shout out Inglewood. That's your block, right? Not real, it's in the crypto game. Hey, good looking out, dog. Nah, nah, I ain't, I'm, I'm not from Inglewood. I just made that video in Inglewood. Real, it's in the crypto gang. <laughs> A little bit, I try to be, but on the real, man, the crypto, the crypto game is under assault. Yeah, oh, in Indianapolis. See, we on daylight savings time still, so it's like 140 over here. 150. It's that Yerp game. Go to Sam's. Yeah, I love that Sam's joint. I went live in Sam's. I know y'all seen that. I got all I got a lot of booty. I wish it was more clear though. We bounce back like rolling ball can't stop real hustlers, you know? Real talk. I did try a little bit of trading, but just learning, it's like major gambling. I thought, I felt like it's major gambling. So I just been holding my Bitcoin. Mm, I don't got that much Bitcoin. I got like one and a half Bitcoins. That, that's, I got some other cryptos that I'm holding, probably like equivalent to about, I think 0.4. Point four of a Bitcoin. I, you know what? I got a few more, some other places. Probably, probably at the most another Bitcoin. In in other cryptos, I've been holding. So in all, I'm probably under. 
Mm, I'm under two and a half Bitcoin in total assets and crypto now. It's just been, it's just been bad. Yeah, I, I trade some penny stocks for a while. Well, I, I don't trade. I held them. I still have some in my Fidelity account. Nah, hell no. Nah. I never even. I don't even eat them. They still there. I don't eat. I don't. I try not to eat cereal. I'm out. Hey, for sure, fam. Good looking out, DJ Underground. That's the Wallace life. That's the homie right there. The reaching noise come Neo. Man, I heard that EOS is the best thing out. Eight dollar stock right now. Go check out that Fidelity account. Man, I got watch you got thousands in there and don't even no, I know is this popping. I got um I got like ten Amazons. I got 10 Amazons. I had like, I had a gang of freaking um, Netflix, Netflix stocks, but I just have a few now. But I still got a bunch. And then I got like some penny stocks. EOS is lit, yep. They just did a deal with, with Volkswagen. I mean, that's, that's big. I hope you get that one. So I seriously hope you get what you want out of life. You legit do. Hey, thanks, Jake. Man, you know, I can honestly say, like, we got to appreciate everything. So I'm happy. I'm content. Like, my mom's like, yo, what, you, you ain't going to start no family. You ain't going to leave behind no kids. I'm like, you know, that, that'll that come. That'll happen. You know, first I got to figure out what's important. You know, I had a ch I had a chance to make a living first. And I always said, yo, I want to make a living first. So that way, when I have a family, I could take as much time off as I can. And I think I'm almost there. You know, finances is straight. But, um, what's that, Jim Byer, a Facebook friend? You're taking it as a real regular human's finna eat 100%. Yeah. I knew Neo was gonna pop. Remember when they first banned Neo and it dropped down? When they banned it over there in China? They banned the uh, ICOs over there and that shit plummeted. Woo! No one ever plans to have a family. It is, man. Nigga, I've been planning, dog. I've been pulling out like a mug. I've been like, no, 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 no. You know, sometimes mom be like, can you have babies? I'm like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I knows what I'm doing. You know, it's like, I'll tell you, I'll be real with you. I had a baby when I was 15 years old. 16. But then I found out that she wasn't biologically mine. And then I was like, man, who gets a chance to do it all over again and do it right? So I just want to be in love when I have kids, you know? Families come and blessings. Take it from me. I hear you. It do. It just, I be so like judgmental. Not judgmental, not even picky, but I've just been wanting to get my finances right. Then I'll feel be the most eligible bachelor. You know what I'm saying? But nigga, how am I gonna be most eligible bachelor? And I can't even afford a house or a condo in my city. You know, but things is changing. Things is looking real good. Hold up, hold up. V Chang uses this tech to secure authentic items with the code. They've been working on wines, BMWs, LVs, and a contract with Chinese government for cigarettes already. So that's your that's your deal. V Chang. 
I don't even have none of those. I need to check that out. Tap in player for show. Sure. One day that pull out game ain't gonna be strong. Nigga, I ain't like your ass. You probably just laying it. <laughs> he gets a pumping on it. Boom, 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 boom. And then fall in. Oh, oh, he can't pick himself up. His hands turn to rubber. And he's trying to push up and pull out. He be like, ugh, ugh. Legs be rubber. <laughs> I Harlem, I Harlem shake it in. I Harlem shake in it, yep. I can see you doing that. Lazy. You wanted them lazy. First of all, corn I ever bought was Ant Shares. Yeah, you know, $450. That's awesome. About $36. around $50. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, when that, that, that Neo, I think I sold my Neo at like, what the fuck? I think like $35. dollars 35 or 45 I sold that shit cheap because I didn't think it was going to come back up like that. And then when, during that time, I was fucking putting all my eggs in one basket like a retard. I was consoli <clears throat> consolidating. Even all of my mining contracts, I was moving that Bitcoin from my mining contracts into freaking BitConnect. That was stupid. Oh, you bought Neo at 35. So you probably bought my shares that I sold on Bittrex. If I'm not mistaken, I think I bought Neo originally for like 14 or 15. No, 14 through 25. Somewhere. Icons is the next Neo for Korea. They pay 30% tax to get into cryptos into their country. So they're making their own platform to dodge all that shit. You know, I was listening to this one dude's story on crypto. And, you know, he wasn't like a YouTuber or someone that was real educated on, on, on crypto. But he just felt like this is... This is too much power for schemers to to come up, you know? And that fucks up everything, that just sucks. So like, when it comes down to like ICOs and stuff, I'm like hesitant. I'm just like, I kind of rather just hold, you know, the coin and not even watch it, just just walk walk away I mean like being on here a lot of people come giving you some real advice you know and a lot of advice I get is just go go with the s and mean, go with the Dow earn freaking 10% year in and out like for the last hundred years, the freaking, the S&P 500 been earning 10% year in and year out. It's like 10% and a lot of money. I'd rather earn 10% a month, 10% a day, you know. But the higher your returns, the lower the probability rate is. So yeah. You gon' you gonna get those returns for a while, but one day, skirt, bah! And then all that investment just gonna disappear. And then you gotta start all over. Then you're gonna be going for higher profitability because you're trying to get out the hole. 
Damn, that sucks, Tommy. But how many did you buy? If you just got one, that's no big deal. You'll come back. But if you bought more than one, then that's real stressful. I'll read up this love and mention that icon. Wait, wait, wait. This is Wednesday 30th. Didn't look at it as money, as technology, and a database. There are not ICOs. There are backbones. Five dApps are built on ICO already. They broke off Ethereum text last month. 500 coins are built on Ethereum. Right. with Neo that no one talks about. All right, I, I tried to get through that. Steady burnt, appreciate it. Do you know anyone who destroys their life gambling? Thank God I don't. Off both nodes system, which is currently only seven nodes. The founder have six of those seven nodes, so technically, Neo right now is super centralized. I don't play with paper, I see you. Hey, much love to G. What you mean I don't play with paper? Ripple as well, but that's not stopping anyone. Yep, it is. Cause that stuff you said about when you will make, take higher risk to get yourself out of the hole is real as fuck. I don't give, I wouldn't give bad advice. I would never touch Ripple. Ripple market caps too money, does it make sense? Neo and ICOs do. I hear you. I do. I invite and I invest in a lot of Ethereum coins, but I go in small. I go in what a hundred or two. You know. I go in a hundred or two just so I don't miss out. What's that acronym? Afraid of missing out. <laughs> I don't even care of missing out. I just want to diversify, you know, but I feel like just putting everything in, in Bitcoin is good enough. He's like, boom, I'm going to get rid of that Ripple. I, I think I got like $700 of Ripple. I don't know the price right now, but I think it's like 700 Ripples because it was around a dollar. Dollars like Ripple, but without most of the shitty aspects. It needs to be mine. Hey, the Fed's got to be involved in some shit. Yeah, the FOMO. Fifteen billion dollar lawsuit. Man, y'all cats will keep me up all night, but I'm about to lay this bad boy down. It was good talking with everybody. Went over a lot of good talk for shows. Respect to you. I don't even, do you put out content, Burnt? I appreciate it. I really do. Oh, you make art. Do you deep where do you display your art? I 
All right, for sure. All right, Jake. You take care too, homie. I'll see you. Oh, you still on, Tommy? For sure, for sure. I'm out too. Hey, good looking out on all the feedback. Who else is on here? Hey, you too, Bridget. Keep in touch. I'm going to check out your page. That's the home girl. Make money. Oh, Scott. Scott saying Ripple is trash. Hold up, I'm Googling one more thing before I go to sleep. Cause as soon as I go offline, I ain't doing shit. Nothing. Alright y'all, shoot. I probably um tomorrow I gotta make a goal. I gotta come up with a bunch of names that uh I'm gonna throw out there tomorrow and I'm gonna see what you guys think about it. And then we'll go from there. Alright. I can't trust this working out just a test, man. My two favorite coins right now. Got that dragon coin. All right, for sure, for sure. Oh, Dre, Dre, you still in here? All right, player. Good talking with you. All right, make money, I'm gone. Steady burnt. Thanks, dog. Appreciate it. Bitcoin long. Much love. Scott, Bridget, everybody, respect y'all, I'm out.